in a grunt room man it is wednesday it's hump day man we're halfway through the week and i am excited about tonight man tonight we've got cody howe cody howe is the result of western sound man and you all are going to get the chance to hear his music tonight Midwestern heart and honest to goodness country lifestyle, drawing inspiration from artists like Randy Rogers, Dirks Bentley, and Zane Williams. His passion for storytelling incites connection and good times through sheer musical authenticity. The Kansas native served seven years in the United States Navy before settling in Nashville to pursue music full-time, attend Belmont University, and support organizations like Project K-9 Hero that help veterans and their families. Upon the move to Music City, Hal linked up with renowned musician and producer Kent Wells. Since then, he has proven to be an unstoppable force, appearing as background vocals on Dolly Parton's highly anticipated rock album, Rockstar. Cody Howell's First solo project, Any Way You Go, is available now with plans of a full album release around the bend. And y'all are going to get the chance to hear it tonight. Let's bring on Cody Howe. Hey, what's going on, brother? How's it going, man? Hey, yeah. great, man. Hey, I, I want to let you know, too, man, that that cover for that um, that song, I absolutely love it, man. Dude, I love it. I, I, I we went through like three different options uh -huh. uh, on what we wanted to kind of feel like we wanted to do. And I actually tossed it out on uh, my Facebook page and uh, kind of let, because I wanted to go with that at the get go, to be honest. But, <laughs> but the label was a little bit like, wait, let's get some options here. And uh, so we went, I went and made some different uh, mock ups and whatnot. And then, uh, Everybody said, no, you got to go with that photo. I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, loved it. I loved it, man. Hell so yeah. give everybody a quick uh, rundown, man. You know, where'd you grow up as a kid? And, and tell them kind of what brought you to the, uh, the Navy? How, how did you end up there? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, uh, growing up, I was, uh, I'm a preacher's kid. Uh, my dad is a, still a pastor at uh Coming back to church in Parsons, Kansas. That's where I grew up, Southeast Kansas. And uh, grew up there and then kind of started working construction. Uh, started listening to a little country music while I was uh, working construction. While at the same time, I was starting to do, learn uh, song leading, dude. <laughs> I was, uh, my, yeah, my dad was like, dude, you gotta, like, you're the guy right now. We don't have a song leader, so you gotta figure it out. So, uh, yeah, so I did a little song leading in church and then, uh, picked up the guitar. My dad played the guitar a little bit. Uh, um, you know, I, so I, I learned the guitar and, uh, he, I, not a little bit, he, he plays the guitar. Uh, but, uh, anyhow, you know, it was, uh, so I learned the guitar that kind of that way a little bit. And then, uh, started kind of getting in the, uh, musical, uh, dang uh -huh. uh and then uh grad or i mean got, got and i was homeschooled so it was homeschooled boom went to uh uh Lebec community college for uh, uh uh i got an associate's degree in audio engineering okay. and then uh i wanted to do mu music man i wanted to do music i don't know something set in my brain said like you gotta do music so it was just there but then whenever i graduated uh the uh associates whatever it is i don't know how to say it whenever i, whenever I got the associates degree huh? uh i had two options it was like go to nashville or uh or give my time to the country you know and uh uh we grew up patriotic there were all my brothers and sisters there's nine of us uh yeah we, my mom instilled a lot of patriotism into us. So uh, I wanted to give my time to the country while I was still young. And then after I joined, I learned you get free college too. 
So I, I went for seven years, uh, was on the air, uh, aircraft carrier, uh, Carl Vinson, for, uh, I think, about three years. And then uh, Special Operations uh, was looking for people, so I uh, put in a package and then got to go to the East Coast for uh, three years. And then, uh, boom, I, I was like, after, after that, I was like, because I want to get off the carrier. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so uh, I went to this uh, spec outside, which was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. And then, uh, uh, man, it was just music was still there, though. So I was like, I got to get out. 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 So I got out, used my GI ability, uh, get me to Belmont or get me to Nashville. Belmont University is in Nashville. It's like one of the best uh, music uh, colleges. So I used my GI ability to get me kind of up here and, it, you know, and then, uh, then just started here about three and a half years ago. So, okay. Yeah, well, man. I hope, I hope, you know, I picked the Navy background. I hope I didn't, uh, I'm not giving you nightmares from, from the air, you know, but <laughs> if, if I would have known you was going to the spec ops, spec ops side, I would, I would have found something more suiting, you know, I, I did the same thing. You know, I was in the army and, and I spent 10 years in the, uh, the special ops side and, and absolutely loved it. So I, I, I can relate, man. It, it is, it's like night and day from the regular military to the special ops side. So. I know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Cause it, like sometimes, I mean, like, I don't, you know, I don't know who, if, if, if people that's in the military is like watching and stuff, like they know, like, okay, there's a lot of not common sense stuff to kind of, you know, but you, but it's a process that's built for that. Cause it's gotta be, you know, in, in a sense, but once you go to spec ops side, it's the special operation side. Then, 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 like everybody's on more of a. Oh, okay, you all right? I got you. You know, it's more of a common sense, I guess. So, ah, you know, I don't, I don't even know if I should have said that, man. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> it's it's truth, though. You know, a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, where all where all were you uh, you stationed? Um, prior to the uh the specs op was he constantly out in the ocean the whole time or yeah so uh um went to uh or did a chicago boot camp or whatever then went to uh maryland uh fort me maryland for a, a six month a school maybe it was a four month a school i think it was a six month a school anyhow so did that then 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 went over to, straight to carl vinson and uh and then, uh, yeah, man. Uh, so we did a ten and a half month. We did plenty of underways. Yeah. But we did a ten and a half month deployment over, uh, over uh, where we was uh, in war with ISIS, and so we just like went over there to the Persian or Arabian Gulf, yeah. whatever, whatever the proper term is to call it. And then we were just uh, pushing out planes and bombing. Yep. You know, trying to do, trying to, you know. Get to get rid of that. Uh, uh, Give, you know. Know. <laughs> so, did you, play, uh, did you play the guitar with you? Was you playing music while you were on the uh, the uh, aircraft? Yeah, I so I wrote I wrote like maybe like uh, I wrote a lot more songs before I went into the navy, and uh, while I was on while I was in the navy, I guess I probably I my writing went way less. Uh, but while we while we was on that ten and a half month deployment, uh, we had a guitar. So uh, I think I wrote maybe I don't even think it was ten songs. I think it was like seven or something. But I wrote like seven songs while I was on there. Uh, but I was, you know, we were still playing different cover songs and everything. And then uh, it was kind of cool, dude. They they had a um, it was like American Idol for uh, our 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 ship you know it was uh no nah, i don't maybe not american idol uh it was more like a talent uh -huh. show or something but it was like four or five weeks long it okay. was fun so i didn't win <laughs> but it was all like uh the way they voted it was like uh they had this uh oh what do you, whenever they do the other online system uh but most people voted for like who was in their department Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, it, it wasn't really like, uh, 
talent. Talent is. He, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't really like he's the best talent. He's like, no, we want this person to win, and they just brought their force of their department. So, <laughs> but it was fun, though. You yeah, know, your buddy, man, you got you got to vote for your buddy, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, that's badass. I didn't know. I didn't know if we was uh, allowed to drink beer or anything. Oh, on this. <laughs> man. Like I said, we keep we keep this relaxed and we have Hell a good, yeah. You know, I poured my beer into this white can. <laughs> <laughs> I got two two uh, beers in here right now. It works, man. I got you know. Normally, I drink a uh, um, bourbon, so I got bourbon back there. I got some shine downstairs, so you know we we keep it pretty well loaded up here. Nice. What's your uh, what's your favorite bourbon? Um, so that far corner. Let me see if I can see how I'm doing it here. Right there is a little white bottle called uh, Walker's K. Uh, okay. It's got a little Marlin on it. That's all the logo on it. It's a little cheap bottle, 35 bucks. Hard to find, but, man, it's very smooth. Um, I have to order it online to, to get it. But, it, yeah, it's not expensive. It's kind of a uh, – kind of got a uh, – Kind of almost like a rummish taste, man. It, it kind of reminds you of like a uh, of a rum, but uh, but yeah, it's. Nice. it's yep. I uh, I also I'm like built... MV too. I got that up there too. Hell yeah! I was uh in uh you Virginia. They had the uh well at the uh what is it called? I'm trying to remember wherever it is on base. They get, you know, you get really good uh, liquor prices. Yeah, classic. So, uh, yeah, I stocked up on a bunch of different uh, bourbons. Uh, yeah. Whichever one was kind of on sale, but I would just keep getting them on sale and stock them up. I built a, uh, I bought a house in Virginia and then uh, built a little bar in the, uh, uh, the garage, mm -hmm. and then uh, had my little rack on the on the backside. And so I, it, I just slowly stalked it, and then it was a lot of good times. But uh, yeah. yeah, anyways, sold out, man. You know, yeah, you know. Um, I also, like I said, I got a, a barrel down there that I I stick the shine in. I let it age in an oak barrel, and whenever we do some of these veteran events, I pass it out and uh, give it to the, uh, you know, I put it in little pint bottles and pass it out to the veterans and just have a good time, man. You'll have to let me know whenever you do one of those events where you're giving it out, man. <laughs> well, you're not. Actually, we're coming to Nashville for an event called Hero Stock in, uh, in July. In July. Hell yeah, dude. I'll be there. Oh, oh hit the table. Let well, me know. Yep. I will keep you updated, man. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk a little bit about um, this Dolly Parton, man. How, how was that? That had to be pretty badass. Yeah, so uh I mean just the same way as uh I think uh a lot of uh people that have been in the military know it's like grind, grind, grind. Yeah, you know, so whenever I got out of the uh military and then came to Nashville for uh uh to go to college and whatnot, and I was like I, I wanna do music still. So it was like grind, grind, grind. So I was like I was out like every night. Uh, meeting like 30 people, sometimes 50 people every night, sometimes, you know, 10. But I, I swear I met probably 50, uh, somewhere from probably at least like 50 to 200 to 300, probably 50 to 300 people every week. Wow. And then uh, it was just going, going, going. So I, I think I met like 5,000 people before I met Kent Wells. Uh, uh, Dolly Parton's producer, Kent Wells, Kent Wells production. Uh, and, uh, so then, uh, we, uh, ended up, uh, you know, I showed him some songs and stuff and he's like, uh, you know, he's kind of digging it. So I was like, okay, cool. So he wanted to work with me and whatnot. And then, uh, so we started working on our, my kind of my songs, my EP and whatnot. And, uh, and then in the process, the song that is is released now, anyway you go. Mm -hmm. So I had uh four, I had my wife, uh, and Angie and Ben in there doing the background vocals. Okay. So we we was singing the background vocals on 
any way you go, where it goes, any way you go, any way you go, you know, the whole crowd uh, sound. And uh, we did that, we did that, and then boom, got that done. And then it was like two days later, Kent uh, hits me up. He says, hey, you know, uh, we need some background vocals for Dolly Parton's thing, but you can't, no one can tell no one because Dolly Parton hadn't put out that uh, she was even doing a rock album yet. So it was like top secret in the uh, music world, you know? And uh, so uh, I was like, well, okay, my wife's good to go. And okay, can you hit up the other people you had before? I was like, okay, yeah, I can. They're oh, wait, wait one second. Let me call you back in like uh, uh, 10 minutes or so. So boom, he called me back and said, all right, just bring you and your wife because he already had some other people that ended up wanting to go. So uh, so yeah, man, then it was like uh, we just went in there and it was, uh, we did Purple Rain, uh, We Will Rock You, uh, which we are the champions. It kind of switches into We Will Rock You. You can kind of hear my voice. Cause I mean, we, I think there was like seven or eight people, uh, singing, mm -hmm. you know, on, on the, uh, on the back, backing tracks we did. And, uh, my wife was there too. And she like, that was cool, you know, just to get her on that. Cause she, she's not like, she's a, she sings. I like her voice, but she's not really a singer or anything. Yeah. So she's like. We will, we will, you know, she's singing like that a little bit, but either way, she's got her credit, you know, so that's cool, yep. you know. But, uh, uh, so yeah, we did, um, Purple Rain, uh, we were, we will rock you, uh, or we are the champions, kind of switched in, and then the, the, uh, oh, what is it, uh, the new one, World on Fire, and then, man, I can't. Whichever other ones, but man, so did you actually get to meet a dolly too, or yeah, that dude that that has to be badass right there. It was cool, man. Uh, so we, I didn't get we whenever we were recording and singing and everything, like it wasn't while she was there or anything, right? But they're working with Kent though. There's been a few times where like I came in like ten minutes after her, mm -hmm. you know, or like. Because I've I've been told a couple times like wait, I know you're supposed to come in at twelve, but can we push it to twelve thirty? And then I'm like, okay, all right, that's fine. And then, oh, wait, can we push it to one? You know, I'm like ah, because Dolly's, you know, but uh, there's I've I've been pushed out of my spot time limit or whatever my spot was because, uh, but I you know how can you can how can you uh get mad at that you know <laughs> she is kind of the queen of country, man. <laughs> yeah i mean it's kind of a i mean you're like hey you know if i'm getting pushed out because of this i mean that's a story already you know if, if it were challenge coins military challenge coins I, I think she would she would have the uh the largest challenge coin man <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody would outrank her. <laughs> Dude, she's gone iconic, man. Like, and I mean, even like, I mean, I feel like she was already pretty much iconic, you know, but mm -hmm. like, I feel like uh, this album was like, I mean, it's the last of that rock era. Yeah. Like it's, you know, maybe it's not the last, maybe there'll be a few other ones, but it's like the, I mean, that's a big one for the, you know, it's it's the end of an era, and I didn't, I you know, I wasn't born in the seventies and in the eighties and whatnot. So like I, you know, I was born in the early nineties. You know, so like I didn't get to see a bunch of that. So like just being able to be a part of that, yeah, you know, it's kind of cool. She's brought that era of music and has transitioned into modern day. You know, and like you said, now she's doing a rock album. I mean, holy crap! You know. That's that's pretty impressive, man. Dude, it's uh yeah, it's uh it's a whole thing in itself, you know, like I I mean iconic, man, you know, like yeah, I, I no, I'm just like this tiny little baby portion of that, but dude, you can hear my freaking voice 
<laughs> in in I know, dude. I was I was thinking, I was like, man, hopefully I can hear my voice somehow through this. But I think I got a, a little bit of distinct singing voice because it it came through. And uh, so whenever uh, she released the uh, World on Fire, it was on the ACMs, and then they had they had our voices on there and whatnot. And I was like. <sighs> I could hear myself, man. And I was like, that is freaking cool, you know? Well, why don't we, uh, while we're talking about, why don't we play your song and then we'll get into uh, into your song, man? Yeah, man. Hell yeah. We'll let everybody hear uh, um, Cody Howe, Any Way You Go. So 
let's get in. Let's unpack this song, man. Where did uh, where did this come from? Where was the inspiration from this? Because this this was a good time. Yeah, it start, dude. It started in a freaking dream, man. Really? It, yeah. It was like uh, I don't know why, but uh, I had a dream like we was walking out of Walmart with like a group of people, mm -hmm. and uh, we like you know three different vehicles or whatever, and uh. I remember sitting in a, I think it was a Jeep or something. And uh, this, uh, this gal was like, wait, should I ride with you or should I ride with who? And like, she was un in indecisive mm -hmm. on who she would ride, who she should ride with. And uh, so that was where, that was where the, uh, I was like, it don't matter. If you go where, we're all going to the same place. It don't matter. Just hop in somewhere. That's where kind of the original, and then you know, whenever you wake up from a dream, and you you got about one or two minutes before you forget it all. Yeah. Well, I I woke up and was able to like jot down the uh, idea and whatnot that I'd kind of had real quick before uh, I forgot it, and then uh, yeah, jotted it down, and then I think I got back to it like later that day, and then kind of. It just kind of flowed out. I don't know. It just like kind of flowed out. And uh, I got I got the first verse and the uh, chord, uh, then the chorus written, and then uh, uh, didn't necessarily get stuck. I started to kind of like write the other parts and whatnot, but it you know it wasn't like there a little bit. You know, like first verse and chorus was good but if you know any songwriters they kind of get stuck at you know you'll get you'll get the verse and the chorus and then you yep kind of yeah so uh i kind of had some ideas and whatnot where i wanted to go and then uh uh i hit up my buddy uh jason johnson uh i don't know if you know him but i'm gonna give him a tag real quick or i'm or i give him a little uh whatever it's called a plug, man. Yeah, so Jason Johnson, uh, he's uh, he's a, he 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 did a, a army, so he's he's with you, he did army, uh, and then he's like a canine hammer, and he got out, and uh, a lot of the like military working dogs, mm -hmm. uh, after they get out of the military, they don't have like uh, um, like retirement, you know, like they don't have it's not taken care of there's no nothing that takes care of their food or their uh um uh, medical bills or anything like that so he started a nonprofit. uh it's called project canine hero and uh i think i might be wrong don't take my word on this but i think it's the biggest uh military working dog slash uh first responder because he, he does, he does uh, uh, police uh, as well as uh, border patrol dogs and everything now. Uh, but I think I think he's, I'm pretty sure he's the biggest uh, nonprofit for all that. But uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, check him out though, uh, Project Canine Hero. I think it's like projectcaninehero.org. But uh, yeah, they do everything from uh, all the dogs and stuff getting out. They... Uh, because a lot of them have to stay with like some sort of trained handler. Like, you can't just you can't put an attack dog, you know, just with anybody, man. Uh, so uh, anyhow, uh, I think like ninety percent or like eighty percent go with their original handlers. Like, but but the uh, the nonprofit still gives them. Uh, uh, food as well as uh, 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 medical bill stuff and everything, and then uh, and then the ones that are like like dude, dogs got PTSD too. Oh yeah, like and uh, like one of them is Rosso, and he, dude, that that dog bit me. <laughs> he did. He, he uh, Rosso uh, protected Trump, and uh, uh, he was in uh, Secret Service for a while, and then he did some uh, thing, but. I was hanging out with Jason. We're riding around on the uh, canine compound thing, and uh, I was like, I was like, hey man, like, 
we might be able to let this dog out. I think the dog might like me. <laughs> you know, and he's like, and he's like, he's right. He's like, all right, if you're stupid enough, but you know, he was there though. But uh, sure enough, like everything was cool. Like everything was nice. And then, uh, but then I lost sight of him for a second and uh, he lost sight of me. So whenever we re Rosso and me re saw each other, He's like, ah. and he came up and yeah, he snagged, he snagged the side of myself and I was, I, I haven't been, I, I haven't been scared, you know, but I was scared then, you know, I was like, Jason, anyhow, the uh, but it, that story, that so sounded like a hold my beer moment. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much sort of like, yeah, sort of like that. It was like. I think Jason was just like, okay, I, well, I can't probably tell Cody no because Cody's going to do, you know, like, you, you know, because I, I don't know, everything I do kind of, you know, I'm like, like, I, what's it called? Uh, whenever you're like set on something, so yeah. you're going to keep, keep, keep trying, keep going, keep going. And so he's like, you know, all right, Cody, <laughs> you know, but I learned my lesson, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but anyhow, is what, uh, the, yeah, the Project K9 Hero, uh, it takes care of all their, uh, medical bills and, uh, all the dog's medical bills and, uh, and then all of their, uh, like food and stuff, they supply that as well as, uh, the, uh, 10, 10 or 20%, whatever it is that, that don't have handlers or they are too messed up a little bit, then, then they're, he takes them on the compound and whatnot, but okay, it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, we'll reach out to him and see if he wanted to come on the show, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell him too. I think he might, uh, yeah, he, he does a few. I think he tries to do like one or two, uh, different uh podcasts or what every week. So he okay. and he's 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 another old son that's on the grind, you know, yeah, just uh, About getting that get your voice out there, man. Do what, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just you know, it's uh whichever way you can get it. But uh, so anyways, anyhow, <laughs> on the song anyway you go, uh, rapping about back around. So I I'm ha hanging out with him. I'm sitting there like, man, I got the first verse kind of written, the first chorus, the other parts. I kind of have the uh idea a little bit for it, and then uh I ended up swinging down over to his his place and it, it, it's over in Whitwell so or Whitwell however you say that about an hour and a half or two hours from uh, Nashville so I, I ended up swinging over there hanging out with him on the weekend and uh and then uh then we started right together on on the rest of it and then it just started to flow in like all the pieces started to kind of come in and I was like okay this is a cool one and uh uh yeah he he had a lot a uh, big part of the uh second verse where it's like uh you can go with flow you can go against the grain you can cut your own damn path just as long as you stay in your own lane yeah you know like he and so that was pretty cool uh but uh yeah we, then it was like uh oh i think uh after after that time we kind of wrote i think it was like two weeks later we met back up again and then finished the song Okay. So it was like, you know. So let me ask you this, man. You know, it's not easy. Everybody knows it's not easy being in the military. What would you, how would you compare trying to break through into the, uh, the music industry compared to uh, a military career? Because I know for a fact it is not easy in the music industry. Either. Dude, it's scary, man. This is way more scary. Like just trying to like, so like I was set a little bit in a, um, uh, I could I could have stayed in the kind of the same uh, group, uh, and you know retired in, mm -hmm. you know, and it's you know once you get into the spec op side, like I mean you, that's a lot of people try their whole career to try to get in there, you know, and they don't. You know, so like I was lucky getting in there, but I, getting out of that and then going to uh, like you're on your own feet 
it's not like you know you don't got it you don't got a guaranteed paycheck you don't got a you know nothing guaranteed like you're like uh you know you you got to be the one that wakes your your own self up in the morning and says hey i gotta get some stuff accomplished today and uh just starting out in the music stuff like i mean i've wasted months you know in the three years i've been here i've wasted months like following down a rabbit trail and then it not result in anything you know and it's like oh okay gotta go back come back to my foundation let's yep. restart okay let's you know let's link out like um and you don't know if it's gonna work you know like i, like I still don't know if it's gonna work like uh, okay so i'm uh, uh with uh my label is uh burning down entertainment and whatnot and uh like they're doing all the uh distribution and and uh all the management stuff and pr stuff but you know i, I gotta make this one work in order to get the next one to work you know what i'm saying like uh and, it, and it, i only ended up even getting here because i was already on the grind of, like so it's like uh that whole remember you, you remember the stress management stuff you do in the military they do the little levels you green you red you yellow you know <laughs> yeah there's a lot of the red uh stress <laughs> on that you know like <laughs> yeah i i get it man because you know just because you got a label and everything and they're doing the distribution and the management but if you're not writing the songs and and, and you're not creating the stuff that that's appealing and people are liking and, and stuff like that, that doesn't mean the paychecks are going to be there. So yeah, I, I get it, man. You know, it's still on you, you know, the weight, the weight and the, the and everything still comes on you. So yeah, I, I get it. You know, that, that would be stressful, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and it was a wake up call. So when I got out of the military, I opened up my, you know, I couldn't find a job. So I created a job by uh, opening up a trucking company. And uh, I didn't know shit about business and I didn't know shit about a trucking company. And I did that for six years. And I learned real quick that there's a lot of weeks that the business got paid, but I didn't get paid. <laughs> and it sucked, you know, and I did the same thing. I tried different things and shit didn't work. And I had to back up and regroup. And yeah, so I, I can relate, man. And it, yeah. it would be tough. You know, but I think uh, I think the fact that you're passionate and uh, and you're talented, you know, I, I, I can't see how it won't work, you know. I, Man, you know, hopefully, you know, <laughs> yeah, you, you think about this, right? How many how many musicians are out there gigging right now? Would you say on average, probably 100,000 easily? yeah something like that yeah probably you know out of a hundred thousand how many you think probably has ever been a backup singer for somebody like dolly parton oh no yeah probably not yeah that tells you you're doing the right things you're putting in the work and and that work getting noticed so i think i think that's and that's one of the, the things that i love about the veteran community and and i've always i've always said it you know Given the opportunity, the veteran community will, we just don't quit. You know, we, we see the mission through even, you know, I, I, I try to see my, my company through when I should have quitted, you know, be, way before when I seen the financial problems, I should, I should have gave up and said, Hey, you know, this ain't working. I should have gave it up. And I, and I didn't, I just kept driving through, through and forward and forward and, and I finally did make it through and I, I did sell the company and, and things did work out. And, and that drive kept me going when things were looking pretty bleak, you know, but I think that's the difference between that veteran community versus some people that have never gone through those hardships, you know, and, and going through selection courses, like you were talking about, man, that is one huge shit sandwich that you have to take a bite out of every day sucks. I, I know, man. <laughs> I, I, I just was thinking back about how many plays, you know, selection courses just absolutely suck. 
So, you know, so, you make it through that, you're definitely going to make it through any of this. Stuff. <laughs> And so yeah, uh, dude, there was like, I mean, you said like three really good points in what you just said, like, because one of them is, uh, I think there's a mentality like, uh, right, there's no plan B. Yeah, plan A is it. We are going to accomplish this no matter what. Yeah, like, and uh, setting your mind like that, uh, like makes any any little failure. Like you just figure it out and then you, you know, you go to the next thing. Uh, and then, uh, that was, you know, that, that's one thought. And then, and then the other, uh, uh, one is like, okay, so like, here's, here's, so like, cause people sometimes will say, oh, well, you got lucky doing, you know, getting to this. It's like, well, okay. Uh, maybe you could give a little bit to luck, but. Uh, you know, if you go to a bar and you give your, you know, you, you see the hottest girl there. Mm -hmm. All right. You give your number to the, the hottest girl there. You don't got real good chances to her hitting you back up, you know. But you go to the bar and you give your number to t the 10 hottest girls there. You got a good chance that one of them will hit you back up. So that's the same way, with, you know, with like, I go with you know, the 99, the 99 90. girls. <laughs> yeah, 99. Let's do 99. <laughs> 10, 10 might not be good at it, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have to make sure I shave up. And, uh, <laughs> you know. But, you know, you just, you know, you uh, spread your uh, chances, I guess. And so one of them's going to hit, you know. It, you know, kind of, but but it's the drive to freaking get all the all of those, yeah, there. And it's, you know, because it's constant; it's every day. You know, waking up, just you know, same thing. I mean, uh, you you you're saying you know, like because I mean, like you could you could have given up on what you were doing and then gone and work for someone else, but but then there's still that. This is the third point that I was thinking, uh, freedom. You know, like. I, I'm in America. I have the freaking chance to do whatever I want to do, you yeah. know, like whatever I want to do. So like, and like, I mean, we, we just being born in, and, in, in you know, you know, just being in the United States, like you're already kind of almost a one percenter, you know, compared to a lot of the rest of the world. And, you know, uh, so, uh, but, you know, like, don't, don't, you know, I think, uh, with that freedom mindset, man, and, and don't waste it. Like, don't like, you know, go do it. You know, like you're going to fail, you're going to fail 50 to a hundred times, and then you're going to get succeed, you know, yep. like and it, a failure is just, Oh, dang it. That didn't work. It, it starts with what Let you get this other. It starts by getting yourself up out of bed and being productive for that day. Every day doing something to drive yourself forward to equal and accomplish your missions, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what it takes. You know, when you, when you set forth and you want to accomplish your missions and, and that's what you were doing, you said it, you said it earlier, you were getting up and you were going to the clubs and you, and you were, handing out your business cards and you were talking to people and shaking hands. And, you know, that may have been a, a, a cab driver that you were talking to, but it may not have been, you don't know, you know, the guy you're talking to could have been somebody who knew somebody, but you don't know, but you were getting your name known because it takes everybody in this industry. It takes the people that are listening and buying your merchandise. It takes the people that are, booking your gigs it takes the people that are you know producing it takes the people that are running the sounds i mean it takes everybody it's a full circle to make the industry run so everybody's got to know your name so you were doing the right thing from the get-go and it started by getting up out of bed and going to work and it's scary 
It is. I mean, it, it's scary because you're like, oh well, I don't. Nothing is uh, like uh, you know, it's not like oh, I'm I just gotta show up and then I get my paycheck. No, because you don't know if you're gonna have a paycheck. Yeah, <laughs> you have to go every day and like figure out how to get your paycheck. Like, and some weeks you don't. You do. You know, so perform, but you have to sell yourself too. You have to produce, oh. yourself, sell yourself, you know? So, I mean, you got to be a businessman, a, 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 a social media manager. I mean, <laughs> you have to do it all. And it's tough, you know? I, I, I talked with a, a lady. Her name's Barbara Sim. Um, and uh, the first time, I thought she was joking with me the first time we talked. But she travels around. She does this, what they call van life. And she bought this. Uh, conversion van and put a bed in it and it's got a sink, a, an oven and, and everything in it. And she travels around in gigs, you know, uh, she was all the way up in Alaska gigging and now she's in Nashville. She's in Nashville right now, as a matter of fact, um, just driving around gigging, loving life, you know? And I was just thinking to myself, man, holy crap. How dangerous! I mean, I drove for six years. I know how dangerous it is out there on those streets. You know, there's some crazy ass people out there. And yeah. uh, get into some Baltimore words like you. Yeah. <laughs> and she, uh, but she loved it. She's living her dream, and and uh, you know, I'm sure she feels the same thing that you're feeling because she don't know. You know, what does she do when she gets halfway between here and there, and and she can't find a gig, you know? Yeah. And that's like, oh, what do I do now? Like, I mean, because you got bills to pay, you yeah. know? And, uh, I mean, if you don't, I mean, you're, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've been everywhere from like $7,000, $8,000 in debt to being $7,000 up, you know? Yep. Like, going back and forth, you know? And I mean, like... Like, but when you're seven thousand dollars down, eight thousand dollars down, nine thousand dollars down, then you're like, oh, like this is getting close. I'm about to fall flat on my face, like just mud right open there, and you know it's yeah, man. It's uh, but if you if you got it, I think if you got a uh, you know. Same thing, kind of like I don't know if you, if if you're gonna do it, you if you got it set in your mind, man, you're gonna do it. And then also like the plan B is easy. Yeah. Boom. Okay, easy. Go to the plan B, but that ain't gonna make your plan A work. Right. If, yeah, it, if you don't have a plan B, or at least you might have, you might can have a plan B, but don't let your mind th know that. Yes. Like kind of push that aside and like trick your brain because then you're going to make sure plan a works. Yeah. But you know, I, I was listening to a podcast and a, a guy, I, I, I can't remember. So I may be getting it wrong. He was either uh, an SF guy or a seal. I don't, I don't remember which, but he said, you know, to make it in any of those elite special ops branches, um, you have to go to, um, with the mindset that there is nothing else. If you go there with the option of, well, I can just ring the bell and go back to where I came from, mm -hmm. you will not make it. Because at some point yeah. you're gonna be like, fuck this and just quit. You have to go with the mindset of, if I fail, I have nothing else. There's no options after this. So I think I think that's, I think that's what that Oh, that'll get that brain locked in. Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. Yep. I, I think that's, I think, I think mindset is absolutely uh, a big importance. And I think passion, and you definitely have the passion for music. I mean, this, this has been in you before the military and, and it stayed with you. It's been a driving force for you. So, you know, I, I, I can definitely tell that, you know, all the way back to, to your church days when you were leading music, you know? So I definitely think so. Is a, uh, yeah. And that and dude, like people have asked me that question, uh, 
Where did that go? I don't know, though. Yeah. Just got into me. Yeah. Something you know, like a wind, a wind blew through, and I sniffed it in, and I was like, boom, I got to do this. Like, that's pretty much. I, like, I don't. Yeah. You know, for for everybody, it, it's weird for myself, too, because I was never a, a music guy. Um, so how the radio station came about was um, – I started podcasting and uh, podcasting ended up turning into kind of therapy for me. You know, I did the same thing that a lot of people did. I, I tried therapy and it didn't work. I went to counselors and, and it just pissed me off and things weren't going good. But then, you know, I, we started this podcast and it started out by just talking to friends and other veterans. And we just started reuniting and telling war stories and, and it was more so it wasn't really a podcast. It was more like Facebook lives and we were just shooting the shit and it kind of turned into a face, uh, a podcast and it turned into people coming on and we started talking to veterans. And and next thing I know, I'm starting to open up and telling more stories that things I didn't talk about before. And the story started getting easier and easier to talk about. And I noticed that I was feeling better about some things and, and the stories weren't as painful as, as they used to be. And uh, then I somehow, you know, because all I ever started, all I ever had was on 501Cs. Um, I had uh, veterans, authors, you know, and then somehow I had uh, Scotty Hastings came on. He was the first musician I came on. And then another musician came on. And I discovered that they kind of had the same problem I did, you know, nobody really knew me. Um, it was hard to get your name out online, you know, and for myself, I didn't care because the podcast was more. So at that point it was for me, it was more therapy for me than anything. So I didn't care about being the next Joe Rogan. And, uh, but these guys were trying to like, you were talking about these guys are trying to put food on their table. So it was important to them to get their name out. And I came across this ad and I don't know, we call it big brother or whatever, but it was a Facebook ad that popped up that said, start your own radio station for 39 95 a month. And I just got this weird ass idea. I said, well, fuck, that's it. I'll just start a radio station for veterans and we'll just, they'll just give me their music. We'll throw it on there and then we'll be good. And man, I got a, I got a real quick lesson that it's not that easy. <laughs> There's a lot of red tape to it than just, playing people's music, you know, um, I learned a lot about copyright and, and all that shit. So I ended up going through and that same mindset, you know, well, I'm not going to just let all this shit quit and make me quit. I started it. Let's finish it. So I went and got licensed through ASCAP and BMI and, and all them, we pay our royalties just like anybody else would. And, and, uh, now we've got, well, as of this weekend, we'll have three stations. We got our mixed channel we got a country station and we're going to have a rock station so i mean it's grown you know since may it just started in may and uh i just i just think that's the way the veteran mindset is the whole veteran community you know the your buddy with the canine same same mindset you know he's seen a problem and, and we just want to fix it you know we don't care about anything else other than just fixing the problems. So I think, I think that that's awesome that, that the community is out there and, and it makes me feel good when I see veterans that have put the country first and then get the opportunity to come back and get their dreams. Because I think, you know, veterans should never be considered those people that are putting in a bottle that says break in case of war. And we don't get the opportunity to, to, have and live our dreams like anybody else would you know like you said you spent 10 months on a boat i mean you're sure as hell not going to go gigging when you live on a damn boat you know so it's impossible for a military guy to spend 10 15 20 years in the military and have a a productive music career you know he would he's not gonna be able to put in the same work that somebody that's doing it full time would so the counterparts is it's not even is what I was getting at. 
So somebody that never served a day in their life and focused strictly on their music career is going to go a lot further than that person that put 10 years of this country at first and then started their music career 10 years later, in your case, seven years later. So I think it's only fair that musicians have a, you know, veteran musicians have a radio station that plays nothing but their music. So they don't have to compete with algorithms and, and other thing with people that have more money to pay for advertisements and, and stuff like that. So that's where the radio station came from. You know, See, that's, I mean, that's it. already an inspiration, man. I'm inspired by that. Oh, uh, you it know, irritated me, you know, when I seen, I seen the stuff that they were going through because they all on the podcast, if you go back and watch the show, they all had the same issues. You know, I, I seen how much of a grind it was, you know, and, and just even asking you, you know, you, you said the exact same thing now it's it's a struggle man and i know how competitive it is and i'm not taking anything away from the civilians that that never served i know it's hard for them too you know i'm not saying that it's easy for for them to break through in the music career either it's a very competitive industry and uh you know i tried to i tried to do something for comics too you know there's there's several i don't know for some reason it's it's 90 percent more but uh um stand-up comedians they're like a they're they're like a weird bunch man you know but i've tried to i've tried to do something to help them too and i don't know it's tough it's tough to break into those guys they're kind of their own little group but uh they're uh, like uh some mariners yeah they just yeah <laughs> they're just their own little thing yeah you, you, you know, know they... <laughs> I've tried to give them a radio station channel for themselves like a comedy channel we're getting ready to start a roku tv channel i thought about offering them a a comedy channel I, they probably won't take that either so <laughs> i don't know man but uh you know but it that's another tough industry stand-up comedy is another brutal very brutal industry so but there's some funny ass marines out there that's for damn sure oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> there needs to be a uh i think there's oh i can't remember what there's some page I can't remember what it's called. Come on, uh, talking about vet, vet TV. Yeah, I yeah. think vet TV or something that does like uh, skits and whatnot and uh, funny stuff. Yeah, they but, got uh, a Marine. I think it's a Marine, an Army guy, and an Air Force guy, if I remember right. It, it are the three branches of the this, the guys that served. They started out on uh, Facebook and. Uh, doing reels and stuff like that. And I mean, they've, they've blown up. They are huge. Now I've reached out to them to see if they'd come on the show, but they're not interested. <laughs> they, oh, dirty, dirty they, bastards. they too big now. <laughs> so, well, brother, uh, why don't, uh, why don't you tell everybody where they can find your music and, and, uh, how they can, uh, you know, any tour dates or any places that you play at where they can find you and all that good stuff, man. Okay. Uh, so right now, uh, I got, uh, I got another semester in, uh, college. So I'm kind of just uh, playing around the Nashville area, but, uh, come summer, I'm going to start touring, but, uh, so yeah, all my, uh, um, uh, social medias, i Cody Howe Country. Okay. They're all the, they're all the same. So uh Instagram, Facebook, uh TikTok, all the different ones. Uh Cody Howe Country. And then uh we released uh the first song, uh Anyway You Go, and it's on all the uh platforms, Cody Howe, Anyway You Go, Spotify, YouTube, whatever. Uh or you know, all of the Whatever, whatever all the platforms are, uh, Pandora. This is what's gonna happen. We gonna wait for Christmas music to get done. Two months, cause you don't want to release a song during Christmas music, nope. cause it's just not a uh, business uh, savvy. No, I think I use that word right. Yeah, okay. 
Yes, it's not good for business. You don't want to release a song while people are trying to listen in to uh, Mariah Carey, you know? <laughs> so, uh, anyhow, uh, so we're going to wait till uh, after all this stuff's done. Then uh, some of the, the other ones are really cool. So, the uh, anyway, go is kind of a bonfire song, so it's perfect for the season. But, uh, uh, the other songs are like, uh, solid, man. Uh, we have one mil kind of half military song on there, but it's not my favorite. Going back to what you were saying. Now I'm rambling a little bit. Sorry, I don't mean to ramble, but. I'll get to that in a second, I guess. Okay, so yeah, there's there's some good ones that are uh the ones that I'm like I think are like solid, solid, you know. So uh we're gonna put them out like uh mid January or uh early February. Uh and those are gonna be good. On the military song, that's going back to what you were saying earlier. Uh after getting out, I didn't want to write. I didn't want to think. I didn't want to like do nothing military, you know, yep. for about two years or two and a half years. I kind of still don't a little bit. Like, I'm like, you know, like, I'm like, I want to get, you know, but, uh, and then, you know, plenty of other people is like, well, you should write a military song. You should write something. I'm like, no, dude, like, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to think about the freaking shit blowing up on a fucking toilet on a fucking aircraft carrier and be like, fuck, what the fuck? You know? Like, and then fucking, or staying in the damn fucking three level, I don't, you know, or freaking blowing out my ear because I was right underneath the air, or right underneath the flight deck. Now I got ear problems in this side of my ear. You know, like I don't want. I don't. Give me some time, yep. and then, then I, then, then I'll come back to that, and then I'll write a song about what you know. But Jason wanted to write one, so we wrote a song called Hadley. Uh, and it's kind of his hometown as well as uh, uh military like influences like leaving your hometown to go in the military and then coming back because it's you know it's, it's always got to draw back a little bit your hometown's always kind of calling the name somehow yeah i don't know how that but that's a real thing i feel like uh but uh yeah so we we wrote that we wrote that one and uh but i, th I don't i don't i don't I feel I feel like I got something deeper in me still. That like I feel like uh there's still you know, but I I'm a I don't wanna I don't it it'll come and when it comes it's gonna be badass. Let's just say that. There's my military song whenever it comes is gonna be it's gonna be solid. It's gonna be Tight. It's, it's gonna tight. be distinct. It's gonna be there. Yep. Uh, but uh, anyhow, we'll release the uh the other songs after the uh Christmas stuff, and uh, uh, yeah, man, there's some really cool songs in there, like uh. Especially one, uh, Hang Ups, Heartaches, and Hangovers. That's a really cool one. That's going to be one coming. But anyhow, all right. I can't yeah. wait. Hey, yeah. You guys are also able to hear um, Cody on uh, Simplify Country and on Vet Mix. Um, so gunroomradio.com, or you can download the app uh, Gunroom Radio. So. We will see y'all. I believe the next show is Sunday with uh, Bulletproof Podcast. So I hope y'all join us. There will not be a Conspiracy Friday podcast this week. So, you know, Brian's going to do his vacation. So 
Oh man, you gotta invite me sometime on the Conspiracy Friday. <laughs> no, just... Absolutely, man. Absolutely, we do. We try to do it every Friday, man. So, all right, man. We all take care, man. Um, Cody, if you don't mind hanging tight, once we go off the air, I'll chat with you for a few minutes. And oh um, yeah. All right, man. We all take care. Be safe, and have a good day, man. Uh -huh.